Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hitman 2. If you enjoyed this video, please assassinate a few public figures and then broadcast a message stating that the killings won't stop unless the world subscribes to Modest Pelican, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. So Hitman, basically you play as Agent 47 and are placed into an area with the objective to assassinate one or more targets. There is no direction, you can literally do this however you like. I love Agent 47 because he is trying to be all incognito but looks exactly like someone who would assassinate you. A bald head, a permanent grimace, always standing like a badass, and on top of all this he has a barcode on the back of his head. Part of his routine is putting on disguises and blending in, like in this mission when I was pretending to be a gardener. It's like what do you mean I don't look like a gardener? Where are the secateurs? I'm just here to prune the mother petunias. Hitman sits in that sweet spot between engaging gameplay and pure fun. So anyway, today's mission takes place in Miami at the Global Innovation Supercar Race. Our two targets are Sierra and Robert Knox. The chick is a race car driver and the dude is an engineer or something. Look, I honestly don't really know. Your boy didn't watch the cutscene or read the mission brief, but that doesn't matter. Sometimes it's better to turn off the lights and slide in blind. I approach the entrance to the racing event and the security guard frisks me. Ha ha ha, at least buy me dinner first. I bet you so many cringy middle-aged women have said that exact same line when they have been frisked at airport security and stuff. Anyway, I make my way into the crowd, armed with nothing but a lockpick, some sedative pills and a dream. It's time to locate my targets. I can't access the VIP area of the racing event, so instead I head to the underground car park. If there's one thing playing Hitman games has taught me, it's that there's always something worthwhile happening in car parks. I overhear one of the mascots having a phone conversation about a blackmail scheme he is planning that involves some controversial documents and a secret meeting. Espionage 101, buddy. Don't have loud phone conversations about your evil plans. He hangs up and then tells me that he actually got into a fight with the employee he stole the mascot suit from and dropped his car keys and wonders if I can fetch them for him. Goddamn furries. I fetch the keys but pretend I don't have them and instead decide I am going to see if I can find his car. I press the key button and manage to spot the van. I am not surprised to discover that the dodgy lad hanging out in the underground car park dressed as a flamingo is driving a pedo van. I steal the documents and give him back his keys. He freaks out when he realises the documents are missing and goes outside to cry. I don't think this jolly joker got the memo that men aren't allowed to cry. It's actually healthier to bottle up your emotions and then one day when it all becomes too much, explode into a vicious rage taking out 15 or so years of feelings on your loved ones. Anyway, I proceed to knock the beta male out and fortunately no one notices. I steal the flamingo suit and dump the body in the river. This guy probably shaves with a Gillette razor. I head back to the racetrack. As mentioned earlier, Sierra Knox is one of the drivers and her race should be finished soon. I'm sure there was some epic way I could have cut the brakes in her car and made her car crash or something, but I was preoccupied obtaining the flamingo suit, which I am certain was the more strategic long-term decision. No regrets either because let's be honest, this suit is a Bob's and Virgin magnet. I do need to actually start planning these assassinations though. Using my lockpick, I discover a back door which leads me to the restrictions area and so I sneak around the back of the building and stroll up the staircase and open her unlocked office door. I enter the room to find two agents lethargically wandering around. Honestly, the security here makes Guantanamo Bay look like a summer camp. I turn on a radio to distract one of the agents and then knock him out and dump his body in the closet. When he regains consciousness, I seriously hope he takes a long hard look in the mirror and considers changing careers as he was just duped by a bloody flamingo. I take his security out Fit, which should allow me to wander around more freely and then all of a sudden Sierra Knox arrives. Unfortunately, her assistant knows that I'm not actually part of the security detail. Just like in real life, this is indicated by the small white dot above her head. I notice that she is sipping from a bottle of water. I mean, I do respect her decision to stay hydrated, but I also see an opening here. When no one is looking, I sneak up and put the sedative pills in her bottle. The Spider-Man game that released last year actually lets you feel like you are Spider-Man. Likewise, Hitman 2 actually lets you feel like you're one of the creepy dudes on To Catch a Predator. Unfortunately, both Sierra and her assistant leave before she drinks her spiked water. I do however find a picture of my other target Robert Knox on her desk, so I grab that. I proceed to stalk the two women around the racing event for about 15 minutes. 
Hiding in the shadows, they go from the bar to speaking with journalists and even past the garage to speak with her mechanics. But eventually they return to her office. Sure enough, the assistant drinks from her water bottle and passes out. I suddenly realise that I have made a huge tactical error. If anyone sees her unconscious body, they'll know something dodgy is going on and so I make a split second decision and drag the body out of sight and dump it in the closet with the agent dude from earlier. Somehow, I get away with it. This risky play is very similar to when you get away with fapping at traffic lights. Sierra leaves once again, but with her assistant out of the picture, I can now move around more freely. I decide to head to the garage and plan something spicy for when she arrives. You get extra points in Hitman if you manage to do things like make kills look like accidents, avoid witnesses, not kill people who aren't the target, and so on. I arrive at her garage and start looking for ways to eliminate her. Now life sometimes throws tests at you, and this lads and lasses was one of those moments. Two mechanics standing under a supercar and the button to lower the supercar sitting right there in front of me. If I chose to crush the two red boys, I could ruin my whole assassination, but on the other hand, and Miraculously, one of the mechanics stepped out of the way at the last second. Fortunately, like me, he must skip reading any safety instructions and steps right back under the car that just crushed his Brody to see if he's okay. Good night, sweet prince. Security gets called, and so I bail just like my dad did. Luckily, there were no witnesses to my car crushing murders, and Sierra flees back to her office. I know that now is my time to make a play. I come to the realization that a cool tactical assassination is probably off the cards now, and decide that I am just going to yeet this little mamacito right here in her den. I pick up a statue from a nearby shelf and throw it at the final agent, knocking him out. Moving quickly, I pull a hammer out of my jacket that I had stolen from the garage, and throw it straight at Sierra's face, knocking her out as well. I drag all the bodies to a semi-hidden spot and proceed to snap her neck to complete phase one of the contract kill. It's pretty brutal, but I need to get paid. This is the tenacious life of an assassin. It's not fun, and each and every person I've ever killed flashes before my eyes at night before I drift into a sleep riddled with the nightmares and horrors of my soulless work. This is not some silly job. I proceed to put back on the pink flamingo suit because you have got to look fresh as when you kill fools, and then I move out. So target two, Robert Knox, is residing on the other side of the racetrack in the Kronstadt building. I find an access bridge that will allow me to cross the track, and then all of a sudden I find myself with another ethical dilemma. Do I push the innocent man, or do I let him live? Look, I'm not going to pretend like I thought about this for very long. You know damn well your boy pushed him over the edge. So to do a quick recap, we have so far killed four non-targets and one actual target. I'm assuming the flamingo guy we dumped in the river drowned. There was the two mechanics that were unfortunately crushed by the car. And of course, Fawley McFallface who mysteriously fell onto the racetrack from the access bridge. Taking this into account, I decide that the next assassination on Robert Knox is going to be more classy. I head over to the water to honestly just properly see what the water looks like in this game. I don't know why, but I always just judge a game's graphics by its water. But anyway, I happen to overhear this gentleman's conversation and it turns out he is a military general who has a meeting scheduled with none other than Robert Knox. He mentioned on his phone call that Robert Knox had never met him in person and therefore doesn't know what he looks like time to make a play. He wanders over to a more secluded area, but there are still plenty of witnesses around. I fiddle with a generator, and for whatever reason, the military general feels compelled to see what is going on. That works for me, because while he is distracted, I quickscope his jaw with my right fist. I put on his clothes, and then ready myself for going deep undercover. I enter the building, and the receptionist is easily fooled. She ushers me in the direction of the meeting. Everyone believes that I am the general, but I start to worry that though I may have found an easy room into the building, I still have no way of actually killing Robert Knox. As I am ushered into the room, it seems like there is some sort of live training exercise in progress. Sure enough, when I arrive, there is robots, scientists, heavy security, and of course my target, Bobby Knox. Now I don't want to sleep with one of these robots, but if it means not blowing my cover, then I guess I'll have to f a robot. James Bond gets to bang Halle Berry, and I'm going to have to go to third base with C-3PO. Fortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong about this situation. Robert tells me that these robots are actually designed to replace human soldiers in war. 
In fact, this prototype model will apparently kill anyone who it has a picture of. I suddenly remember about the picture I stole of Robert from Sierra's desk. If I can get that photo onto the prototype, maybe it will shoot him. He then conveniently encourages me to fiddle with the robot and so I approach the device and place the photo I have onto the scanner. He turns around to see the robot raise his weapon and then he is brutally gunned down. Everyone in the room begins to panic as they don't know why the robot just malfunctioned. I mean, if I was there, I would have probably guessed that the shifty looking guy with a barcode tattooed onto his head had something to do with it. But anyway, I used the chaos to slip out of the room and begin looking for a way to escape. I'm not going to lie, it always feels damn good when you pull off an assassination that smooth in Hitman games. I've actually been a fan of the Hitman franchise for years and recently they've brought back that feeling the older iconic games had like Hitman and blood money. The game is not for everyone. It's slower paced, methodical gameplay, but I personally really enjoy it. Anyway, that's it from me, you legends. Thanks for watching and a massive thank you to my patrons for their ongoing and generous support. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.